My name is Dennis Troper, and I'm the product director for Wear OS. And I'm really, really excited to be here today. Let me start with a little bit of history. By the way, I need the clicker. You know, when we first started Wear OS four years ago, we went out to see what people were wearing. And what we found was a tremendous amount of diversity out there. People really care about what they wear. It evokes their passion, their style, and their personality. The same goes with what you wear on your wrist. It's a really, really personal choice. And so from the start, we made a decision to bring lots of choice and diversity into the wearable space. Today, we couldn't be more pleased how this strategy has played out. We have over 50 watches that are powered by Wear OS today out in the market, from top brands like Louis Vuitton, Michael Kors, Fossil, and many, many others. Let me show you some of the recent launches of watches that we've, uh, that we've introduced in the market with our partners. Back in the fall, for the holiday season of 2017, Misfit launched the Misfit Vapor smartwatch. The Misfit team did a great job with this watch. It has a very sleek and stylish design. It fits great on your wrist, and it makes for a great fitness watch. Then this past January, Kate Spade launched the Kate Spade New York smartwatch. It's a beautiful watch, and users are really loving the Choose Your Look app that matches your outfit with your watch face. And then this past March at Basel World, Hublot introduced a limited edition smartwatch called the Big Bang Referee 2018. This is a beautifully crafted smartwatch. It's body made out of titanium and with a theme that celebrates the most popular sport in the world, soccer. Actually, really excited about this watch. I'm a big soccer fan myself. And get this, referees are going to be wearing the Big Bang Referee at international matches to help them connect with the latest goal line technology. That's really, really cool. So we're really excited about all these new watches that are coming to market. We've built a lot of momentum with our partners. To give you a sense of that, in 2017, we launched 26 new watches. That's twice the number of watches that we launched the previous year. And an interesting stat, we're now seeing a lot of iOS users in the Wear OS platform. This past year, in 2017, we grew 148% year over year in iOS users. And today, one out of three new Wear OS users activate their watches with an iPhone. And so this is why last month we decided to change our name from Android Wear to Wear OS by Google. We want a brand name that really reflects the great diversity of users that we have in our platform, as well as the wide range of choices of watches that are out there. We're really happy with this new name. Our partners are really happy with it, and our users are loving it as well. So you know, we've learned a thing or two over the last few years working in the wearable space. And I want to share a key insight with you guys. It's a simple one, and perhaps an obvious one. But the way people use watches today is very, very different from how they use phones. They're very different in how people interact with them how long they use it, how often they use it, and what they use it for. With a phone, first of all, you carry it with you all the time. And you have two hands to interact with it. It has a large screen. And uh, you can spend a long time with it playing games, doing social media, or responding to email. With watches, it's a very different story. With watches, you use it, you carry it with you on your wrist all day long, but you use it very sporadically. And when you use it, you, it's just for very short moments to get some information, 
And then the faster you can be back doing what you're doing in the real world, the better. So, you know, we've taken these learnings to heart in how we think about our platform going forward. And we are now focusing on three very important areas to improve the user experience. Let me walk you through them. First is connection at a glance. Second is health and fitness. And thirdly is convenient help from the Google Assistant. Let's start with connection at a glance. You know, in this day and age, people are expected to be connected all the time. <laughs> As I said before, we carry our cell phones most of the day, but there are some cases in which pulling out your cell phone is inconvenient, or sometimes we just don't have it with us. For example, when you go out on a run or on a bike ride, or if you go to a fancy dinner dressed in an outfit with no pockets. But in any of these occasions, you still want to be connected to the people and the information that you really care about. You know, I myself, I'm the father of five kids. And I also like mountain biking. And I can tell you from experience, having to put my cell phone in my backpack where I carry water is just really inconvenient. Watches, smart watches, fill this gap really neatly. You know, they're very easy to access. There's a lot of computing power in here. And this is one of the key reasons why users love wear wearing Wear OS watches, is to help them have the peace of mind that they can be freed from their phone, but still be connected to the information or the people that they really care about. And so this is an area that's really important, connection at a glance. And we're doubling down on it uh, to increase the user experience and bring more to our users. To give you just a few examples of things that we've introduced recently in the areas of notifications and complications, let me show you real quick here. Very recently, we introduced adaptive text sizing, which essentially allows uh, the glanceability of the notifications to be much, much better. Because when you receive a short text, the size of the text gets bigger, so it's easier for you to read it. We also introduced recently darker backgrounds and a new font type so we can increase the readability and fit more information onto the screen at a glance. We've also done things to improve our complications. You know, complications are these bite-sized bite chunks of information that they sit right on your watch face, and they're very handy little tools. I, myself, I use the agenda complication a lot. It really helps me many times during the day to tell me where I need to go next uh, for my meetings. So we've done more because we think this is an important area for people to stay connected. Very recently, we introduced the notification preview complication. This is a very handy complication that brings the top rank notification right on your watch face. Things like breaking news, a chat message, or your next appointment will be right there on your watch face with this complication. And we also introduced another complication that we called the recently launched app complication. This is one where it's very handy when you have types of information that you like to uh, access very frequently during the day. For example, the weather or checking the scores of a live game. So this is just a few examples of things that we're doing to increase connections, at a, increase the experience for connections at a glance. And as I said before, we're doubling down in this area, and you should expect a lot more from us in the months to come. Next is health. You know, health and fitness is one of the most important reasons why people buy a smartwatch today. People want to be healthy, of course, and we at Wear OS are very committed to helping people lead healthier lives. So we're doing more with it. We're helping, we're working uh, tirelessly to give users the ability to track their health much better than ever before, and also to offer them a, more, a superior experience to track their active fitness. Let me show you just a few examples of things that we've done recently. 
Very recently, we launched a feature called Touch Lock. This is a great feature, for example, if you go on a swim or you go out on a run on a rainy day, and you're tracking your workout with Google Fit or any other application like MySwim Pro, Strava, or RunKeeper. With TouchLock enabled, what happens is that your screen basically gets disabled, your touch screen gets disabled, to avoid any unintended behaviors while your, water is in, while your watch is in constant contact with water. To disable touch lock, all you have to do is click on the button, and you're back into normal mode. Next is music. You know, music is a huge deal for many people when they're working out. It helps them stay motivated and energized. And so we've made accessing the music media controls much, much easier than ever before from the Google Fit workout screen. All you have to do is scroll down from that screen, and you get to the media controls where you can choose the next song that will help you power you through the rest of your workout. We're also doing a lot more with the heart rate sensor. We recently introduced continuous heart rate monitoring, so you can check your heart rate many times during the day. And you can also compute your resting heart rate right from Google Fit. So this is just a few samples of things that we're doing in health and fitness. We're, as I said before, helping people lead healthier lives is core to our mission. And we're working really hard in many aspects of health and fitness, and we're going to be bringing uh, a lot of new features in the coming months. So stay tuned. The last pillar that we're focused on is the assistant, convenient help from the assistant. You know, today, unlike traditional watches that only give you they're very good at giving you the time. With smartwatches, you expect to get the best out of the time. For example, in my case, very, I'm very busy during the day. I could quickly look at my phone and be able to check when the next train leaves to San Francisco so I can be home in time for my daughter's soccer game. We're working really hard to improve the experience for the assistant to optimize for the wrist form factor. In a few short minutes, I'm going to invite Tom to come on stage. He's going to tell us a lot more about what we're working on here with the assistant. So there you have it. These are the three areas that we're focused on to improve the user experience, connections at a glance, health and fitness, and convenient help from the assistant. But in order to do this really well, we require a very solid and robust foundation. Here I'm talking about things like power, connectivity, performance, the companion apps that go along with the device, and so on. Let me just highlight three of them very quickly. First, iOS. As I said before, we're welcoming a lot of new iOS users. And we want those users to have a great user experience, just like anybody else that is wearing a Wear OS watch. Very recently, for example, we introduced a brand new iOS companion app that brings Google Fit summary stats right on the app so you can see it from the comfort of your iPhone. This is just one example of many things that we're doing to improve the iOS experience. Next is power. Power is really, really important when it comes to smartwatches. And we're working across the Wear OS stack to optimize battery consumption. Right after Tom, we're going to invite my colleague, Rati. She's going to tell us a lot more about what we're doing with Android P and how this has a positive impact in power. And lastly, I'd like to highlight that we're bringing faster and more frequent updates to the platform. That's really, really important for our users, that they get continuous improvements to the watch constantly throughout the year. With Wear 2.0, we made changes to our architecture so that pieces that were considered to be traditionally part of the OS are now updatable platform components. And as a result of that, this past year, in 2017, we were able to do 11 releases to the platform, 
and introduced 49 new features and improvements. This year, we are on track to do the same or even higher. We have a, we're, we're introducing a lot of features really, really fast, and we're really excited about that. So as I said before, the Google Assistant is one of the key pillars that we're working on, really, really important for us. And I'm going to invite Tom on stage to tell us a lot more about it. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. Hi, I'm Tom, and I work on the Assistant for Wear OS. We want the Assistant to follow you across all of your devices. And when you interact with the Assistant, it should adapt to the device that you're using. And for Wear, we want to provide an awesome Assistant experience right on your wrist. With our last update this week, we've completely redesigned our UI and have three major improvements that I'd like to talk to you about. First, we have an always present microphone, which automatically reopens to continue the conversation with the assistant hands-free. Second, support for text-to-speech. If you have a paired Bluetooth headset or a wearable device that has a speaker, when you talk to the assistant, now can speak right back to you. And lastly, my favorite, support for suggestion chips. Suggestion chips allow you to breeze right through a conversation just by tapping. But the biggest new addition for Wear is support for Actions on Google. Actions on Google allow anyone to write a great wearable experience without having to write a single line of Android code. Even better, most existing Actions already work on Wear OS today without any changes. So let's take a look at how this works. You may have already used Dialogflow to build Actions for the Assistant. It's a platform provided by Google that helps to turn natural language into a format that you can just go and build cool stuff with. And starting this week, you can also use Dialogflow to create Actions for Wear OS. Best of all, we've already done all the hard work of building out response templates that are appropriate for wearable devices, so you don't even have to think about it. If you haven't used Dialogflow yet, it's super easy. Just yesterday, I was creating my own action. I only had to define this action once, and it will work across all supported devices. Here's what it looks like on mobile. This might look pretty familiar. There's an action icon at the top, a tappable list of the Google I.O. sessions I plan to go to, and a suggestion chip at the bottom. And this is how it looks on Wear. All the same components exist, but now they're tailored for a smaller, wearable form factor. I didn't have to do anything special for this to happen. It just works. And now, even if you're going a little bit deeper and you're using the Actions SDK or a webhook for fulfillment, we still have you covered. In this case, I'm adding a new card to the conversation that has a little more information about this session. And this is how the card will render on both phone and wear. It automatically resizes and looks great regardless of which device is being used. So over the past few months, we've been building and testing a lot of actions. And we've come up with some best practices to help your actions look really great on Wear. Let's start with an example. OK, Google, ask Bay Trains when is the next BART from Fremont to Hayward. There's supposed to be an animation here. There will be a BART from Fremont to Hayward leaving today at 11.21 AM. Cool. So as Dennis mentioned earlier, we want users to have glanceable interactions. We want users to get tasks done quickly. We want to allow users to complete a task with a single phrase. In the previous example, I was able to get the information that I asked for by speaking a single phrase. Imagine if I had to specify all that information separately, the train that I wanted, the station, the direction of travel. That would take way too long, and I'd be far more likely to just pull out my phone. Keep your dialogues short, concise, and task-oriented. Now, there are cases where having a back and forth dialogue is important and maybe even required, and that is fully supported on Wear today. However, try not to make it part of your core user journey. As you may have just heard, Wear now supports vocal responses. And they don't have to be the same as the visual. 
In the previous example, both the visual response and the vocal response tell me when the next train leaves. That's what I asked for. But the visual response goes a step further and shows a more detailed list of departures. That information would probably be a little bit too dense to read aloud vocally, but visually, it works really well. Independently, both the vocal and visual response make sense, but together, they really complement each other and make an awesome experience. Keep in mind that not all devices support, support vocal feedback, so you can use Surface capabilities to really tailor your experience to the device that's being used. So vocal responses are cool, but my favorite new feature is suggestion chips. So I have to admit, I'm a little nervous. Uh, last few times I came to Mountain View, it rained, and I forgot my umbrella, got soaking wet. I know it looks like a nice day out there today, uh, but let's ask the assistant to see uh, how things look. OK, Google, do I need an umbrella today? Uh, right. Cool. Not expected to rain. This weekend, I was planning on going for a hike. And I can use suggestion chips to get that information quickly, the weather for this weekend. I can just drag up on the bottom drawer where the microphone is located, which will reveal suggestion chips, and I can tap on weather this weekend to quickly get the forecast for the weekend. The weather looks great. I should bring my sunscreen. I love suggestion chips. Not only are they a great way for guiding users through a conversation, they also allow users to discover what your agent can and cannot do. Provide example chips whenever possible to guide users through a conversation. When thinking about how to build your action, be user-centric. Someone might be using your action in a lot of different ways. They might be on the go, their hands might be full, and vocal responses might be more appropriate. Or they could be somewhere noisy, and suggestion chips are the easiest way for them to tap through an interaction. Design with all these use cases in mind. We've had a lot of fun building support for Actions on Google. And you can get started building your own agents today. I am so excited to see what you're going to build. And if you need some inspiration, we have a lot of great partner demos in our sandbox. And you can come by after the session to say hi and check them out. And if you're interested in building actions, I definitely recommend to check out the design actions for the Google Assistant session, which starts right after this one on stage two. But don't go just yet, because up next is Rati to tell you about our platform updates. Thanks, Tom. Hi, I'm Rati. I'm a technical program manager working on Wear OS. Tom just showed you how to build really cool assistant actions on Google's for Wear users. Now let's move on to the platform updates that we have. With the new Wear OS release, we are introducing platform features that would help you to offer delightfully stable and battery efficient experiences throughout your apps and help you build really cool watch faces with just a few lines of code. To begin, I'd like to talk about an Android P feature that is going to impact you as a developer. Android P is adding restrictions on accessing methods and fields unsupported by the SDK to improve app compatibility and to prevent apps from breaking. Wear OS is adopting these restrictions with the goal of making app behavior deterministic and stable. This is very similar to what the developers on my team face just before a product launch. The deadlines and restrictions can make people a little unhappy as they're dashing to meet the deadlines. But come launch date, the team is really happy when they're able to launch a stable and reliable product that meets our users' needs. So check out the app compatibility link, g.co slash dev slash appcompat, to understand what these changes mean for your apps. Moving on to battery. Battery is precious on mobile, and even more so on wear. Last year at I.O., we highlighted that most watches have just one-tenth the battery capacity of a phone. And we shared some best practices on improving battery life. 
We also indicated that we would be looking for ways to be more aggressive than the phone in addressing battery usage. This year, we're moving beyond the mobile platform and introducing features to reduce background activity, aggressively turn off radios when the user takes off the watch, and enhance battery saver mode. Let me walk you through some of them. Here's a snapshot of the app standby feature that was introduced in yesterday's talk, What's New in Android P. On Wear OS, we are experimenting with a more aggressive platform change. Apps that are not active will not be able to create jobs or alarms when they are not on the charger. Now, even when they are in the active bucket, they can only start jobs or alarms if they are in the foreground. What do you mean by foreground? Well, an active app running in the foreground is an example. A watch face currently active on your dial. Complications on your currently active watch face. And in very rare circumstances, say if you're a health monitoring app, a foreground service running on the watch. All of these can create jobs and alarms. If you are a Wear app developer, be sure to experiment with these changes in the developer preview and provide us with feedback. Another platform feature that is being revamped in the upcoming release is battery saver mode. We are enhancing this mode to go beyond the phone platform to aggressively squeeze that last ounce of battery and prevent the watch from turning off on users' wrists during the day. In this enhanced version of battery saver mode, we would be turning off all radios, touch, and tilt detection, and would be defaulting to a battery-optimized watch face. Users can short press to read the time and long press to resume full operation. Now, this could be particularly helpful if your watch is running low on battery, but you want to quickly be able to turn it back on to, say, make a payment or to check an important message. Continuing with our efforts on improving battery life, last month, we moved to using a dark theme for our system apps as Dennis mentioned earlier. Now, this theming has the dual benefit of improving glanceability and accessibility while reducing power consumption. In P, we're bringing these changes to the platform and updating the default system UI to use the dark theme. So try these changes out on your app using the current developer preview. I'd like to leave you with some best practices for watch face design. As you know, watch faces are the most active apps and frequently are doing too much too often. As developers, you have the ability to influence how long users can experience and enjoy your watch faces using simple coding techniques to save battery. Let me share a few best practices with you. Display, CPU, and network are the most battery-intensive components of the system. Be mindful of the frequency at which you are reading, processing, or displaying information on a watch face. For example, if you're reading a sensor and doing calculations every minute, or sending an RPC to the companion every minute, this can significantly impact the battery life. And once you have the new data from the sensor or the network, you would also have to wake up the system to process it. Processor wake-ups are more expensive for battery life than the power consumed by individual sensors like the accelerometer. So batch your sensor requests and network calls. Batching can go a long way in conserving battery life. Finally, moving on to some developer tools. Last year, Android and as a result, Wear OS officially started supporting Kotlin. Now, you can already take advantage of a lot of language features like compile time null checks and Lambda support. But to get the best out of Kotlin, we need to go beyond what the language offers by default. On Wear, 
We are experimenting with creating a domain-specific language, or DSL, for watch faces, so you can get rid of a lot of the boilerplate code. The initial results are quite exciting. We reduced the watch face creation code of 600 plus lines to just under 15 lines of code. And here's a snippet of what the DSL looks like. This simplified interface allows you to focus on the design and customize your watch faces using just a couple of lines of code while incorporating best practices to boost the performance and battery life of your designs. We're very excited about the opportunities that Kotlin provides and are just beginning to scratch the surface on simplifying development on Wear OS. We look forward to your feedback while we work towards adding this to our official SDK. Check out the code labs at I.O. and visit the Wear OS sandbox to share your feedback and ideas. To summarize, use officially supported methods and APIs instead of private APIs to improve compatibility and stability of your apps. Design your apps and watch faces to be battery efficient. Remember, batching is your friend. Download the pDeveloper preview and check out how your apps are impacted by the battery saving features that we are introducing. And finally, Give Kotlin DSL a spin using the code lab and let us know what you think. With that, let me hand it back to Dennis for closing. Thank you, Rati. All right, to recap, we're working really hard to improve the Wear OS experience in three key areas connections at a glance, health and fitness, and a Google list and a Google Assistant experience that is optimized for the wrist. We're also improving the platform with new battery-saving features and new tools for developers. And also, you can expect a lot more and frequent updates from us during the year. Today's session is just the beginning for us here at I.O. At 2.30 PM, we have office hours where you can meet with our engineers and our developer relation folks. Come on by if you have any questions. They'll be really happy to receive you and talk to you about anything that you'd like to, do, to talk about with regards to Wear OS. And at 11.30 AM tomorrow, we have an app review session where you can bring your Wear app, your complications, or watch faces to get feedback from our engineers. And we also have a sandbox. Here's a map of where it is. Please come visit us. Tom, Rati, and I will be there right after the session, as well as many of our colleagues at Wear OS. We also have some cool demos there to show you, and a full lineup of some of the most recent Wear OS watches. That's all. Thank you very much for coming, and have a great I.O. <laughs>